Let's offer together our prayer for a better understanding of true stewardship in our lives and here in our parish. Lord God, you alone are the source of every good gift, of the vast array of our universe, and the mystery of each human life. We praise you and we thank you for your great power and your tender, faithful love. Everything we are and everything we have is your gift. And after having created us, you have given us into the keeping of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the name and spirit of Jesus, we commit ourselves to be good stewards of the gifts entrusted to us, to share our time, our talent, our material gifts as an outward sign of the treasure we hold in Jesus. Amen. Our presider for this Mass is Father Matt. As we begin, please join us in singing our 538 Breaking Bread. Sing to the mountains, 538. Please stand. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Christ, only 
begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's liturgy of the word. A reading from the book of Surak. The Lord is a God of justice who knows no favorites. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, yet he hears the cry of the oppressed. The Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan, nor to the widow when she pours out her complaint. The one who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the crowd. It does not rest until it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the Most High responds, just judges justly and affirms the right, and the Lord will not delay. The word of the Lord.
Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The who are crushed in in spirit he saves the Lord redeems the lives of his servants no one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him the A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth, The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his kingly, heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
be with you with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else two people went up to the temple area to pray one was a pharisee and the other was a tax collector the pharisees took up The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven but beat his breast and prayed, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. This weekend, Jesus tells us a parable with two men who approach God in very different ways. But first we're told to whom Jesus is addressing this parable, namely those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. So we're talking about arrogant, conceited, narcissistic, self-important know-it-alls. I'd imagine that we've all met one or two people like that in our own lives. This has to be a tough crowd to address, even for our Lord. So this parable has to be severe enough to break through their hardened hearts. The parable that we all just heard proclaimed juxtaposes one of those arrogant know-it-alls with a lowly and sinful tax collector. We need to remember that the tax collectors, they were Jews that worked for the Roman government and extorted their own people. They were seen by the other Jews as low-life enforcers for the regime. We can compare the prayers of these two men. The Pharisee's prayer consists of him first thanking God that he's not like one of those filthy commoners, and then proceeds to brag to God about his fasting and tithing. The tax collector, on the other hand, he stood far away, and he lowered his eyes, and he proclaims that he's a sinner, and he asks God for forgiveness. Of these two men, which one does Jesus say went home justified? was the tax collector with the humble prayer. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus is telling us that our prayer should be humble, that how we interact with God should be with humility. Also that how we should interact with others is also with humility. Today's world, It seems that humility is a virtue that people don't appreciate too much. We're just a few weeks away from a midterm election, and we hear on the radio and TV and billboards, and some get those kind of annoying text messages from all kinds of candidates. They're running for all sorts of government offices, and they tell us about their strengths and their vision for our county or our state or our nation. Some of the candidates are humble, and other candidates, they believe that they have all the answers. But we also know that no one person has all of the answers or all of the wisdom. 
This is true also in our families and in our churches and organizations and teams and corporations. Any group where people come together for a common purpose. Humility does not mean that we demean ourselves, pretend to be less than we are. True humility means that we recognize and acknowledge our limitations as well as our gifts and our talents. No one person has all the answers. Humble people will freely ask for advice or wisdom and will acknowledge when they need help. Jesus does not want us to demean ourselves, nor does he want us to exalt ourselves. Jesus has gifted each and every person with many gifts and talents. However, Jesus also realizes that we have limitations and faults. Today, I invite everyone to be mindful of when it's time to share our gifts and talents and when we could use some words of wisdom or insight from someone else. Give thanks for the many gifts that you have and share, and give thanks for the many people who share their insights and talents with you. Together, we can enrich our world and make it a more loving and peaceful place. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We heard that God hears the cry of the oppressed, the orphan, the widow, the poor, the lowly, the one who serves God faithfully. Acknowledging our own poverty and sinfulness, we petition God for justice and mercy. For the church on World Mission Sunday, that we may always seek to carry on the Lord's mission, bringing joy to the poor, peace to the troubled, hope to the lowly, and good news of redemption to all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit in always working for the common good, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for a bountiful harvest from farms, orchards, and vineyards, and that the fruit of their fields may feed plenty and the laborers in their field may be well rewarded, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the widowed and the orphaned, that they may be cared for by loved ones and enjoy the companionship of family and friends, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Albert and Judy Mihawk, whom we remember in this Mass, and for Steve Nagy, Eugene Klimko, and Albert, Albert Casanta, who were buried this week. May all of the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs we hold deep within our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, watch over us all, the lowly, the proud, the weak, and the strong. 
showering your mercy on all your people. Hear this in all our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For communion, please join us in singing number 324, Breaking Bread, I Receive the Living God.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. There are three announcements today. 
First one is the new parishioner registration is today from 8 o'clock to 1.30 in the St. Charles room. Number two, please join us this evening from 6 to 7 in the chapel for a night of praise. And the last one is the young adult social is this evening from 5 to 6 in the St. Matthew room. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. In closing, please join us singing number 443, Breaking Bread. How can I keep from singing 443? Since love.